Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, I'll show you how to place an image into a shape with Photoshop. As we'll see, Photoshop makes it easy to place any image into any type of shape, from a basic rectangle or circle to a fancy custom shape. For this video, we'll use one of Photoshop's custom shapes. But once you've learned the steps, you can start placing images into any shape you like. I'll be using Photoshop CC, but everything we'll be doing is also compatible with Photoshop CS6. If you're watching this video on our website, you'll also find the complete text version of this tutorial, so you can watch the video or or read through the steps. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Well, let's start by creating a new Photoshop document. Go up to the File menu in the menu bar along the top of the screen and choose New. This opens the New Document dialog box. If you're using Photoshop CC, you'll see the newly redesigned version of the dialog box, and if you're using Photoshop CS6, you'll see the older traditional version. We'll look at the Photoshop CC version here, but you'll find the same options for creating a new custom document in CS6. In Photoshop CC, the options for customizing the document are found in the Preset Details panel along the right of the dialog box. For this tutorial, let's create a square-shaped document. Set the width and height to 2000 pixels. We'll set the resolution to 72 pixels per inch and the background contents to white. In Photoshop CC, click Create to create the new document. In Photoshop CS6, click OK. And here we see the new white-filled document on the screen. As I mentioned earlier, you can use any type of shape for this effect. For this tutorial, I'll use one of Photoshop's built-in custom shapes. Select the Custom Shape tool from the toolbar. By default, the Custom Shape tool is nested behind the Rectangle tool. To select it, right-click on a Windows PC or Control-click on a Mac on the Rectangle tool, then choose the Custom Shape tool from the menu. There's three types of shapes that we can draw in Photoshop. We can draw vector shapes, paths, or pixel-based shapes. Vector shapes are the type you find in drawing programs like Adobe Illustrator. And that's the type we'll use here, because they let us draw the shape at any size we need while keeping the edges nice and sharp. To draw a vector shape, make sure the Tool Mode option in the Options bar is set to Shape. To let us see our shape against the white background, we'll set the fill color of the shape to black. You'll find the fill color swatch in the options bar directly beside the tool mode option. By default, it should already be set to black. Next, let's choose a shape. Photoshop includes lots of ready-made custom shapes for us to choose from. But again, by default, only a handful of them are loaded into the program. To find the rest, we need to load them in ourselves. If we look at the Shape thumbnail in the Options bar, we see the shape that's currently selected. In my case, it's an arrow, which isn't the shape I want to use. To choose a different one, click on the thumbnail. This opens the Custom Shape Picker, with thumbnails of all the shapes we can choose from. You can make the custom shape picker bigger by dragging the bottom right corner. As I mentioned, only a handful of shapes are displayed at first. Let's load all of the shapes to give us more choice. Click on the menu icon in the upper right corner of the custom shape picker. In the bottom half of the menu, you'll see a list of all the custom shape sets we can choose from. Rather than loading each one separately to see what we get, let's just load all of them at once. To do that, select All from the top of the list. Photoshop will ask if you want to replace the current shapes with the new shapes. Click OK. Back in the Custom Shape Picker, we now have many more shapes to choose from. Scroll through the thumbnails until you find the one you want to use. The heart shape, which is actually one of the original default shapes, is a popular choice. But for something different, I'll choose the butterfly shape. To select it, I'll double click on its thumbnail. This selects the shape and closes out of the custom shape picker. To draw your shape, Click in the upper left of your document to set a starting point. Then, with your mouse button still held down, press and hold the Shift key on your keyboard 
and drag diagonally downward towards the bottom right corner. Holding the Shift key as you drag locks the aspect ratio of the shape so you don't distort the look of it. To complete the shape, release your mouse button, then release your Shift key. Photoshop draws the shape and fills it with black. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the shape sitting on its own shape layer above the white filled background layer. To move the shape into the center of the document, select the Move tool from the toolbar. Then click on the shape and drag it into the center. It should snap into place once you get close to the middle. At this point, we've drawn our shape, so let's open the image we're going to place inside of it. Here's the image I'll be using. I downloaded this one from Adobe Stock. Let's copy the image and paste it into the Shapes document. Go up to the Select menu at the top of the screen and choose All. A selection outline will appear around the image. Then go up to the Edit menu and choose Copy. Switch back to the Shapes document by clicking on its tab just below the Options bar. Then go back up to the Edit menu and choose Paste. Photoshop pastes the image into the document. At the moment, my image is completely blocking the shape from view, and the image is too big to fit entirely within the shape's document. We'll fix both of these problems in the next couple of steps. If we look again in the Layers panel, we see that Photoshop has placed the image on a new layer named Layer 1 above the shape layer. To place the image inside the shape, all we need to do is create a clipping mask. Make sure you have the image layer, layer 1, selected. Then go up to the Layer menu at the top of the screen and choose Create Clipping Mask. This clips the image on layer 1 to the shape layer below it, which means that the only part of the image that remains visible is the area that's sitting directly above or in front of the shape. The rest of the image is now hidden, creating the illusion that the image is actually inside the shape. And if we look again in the Layers panel, we see that Layer 1 is indented to the right, with a small arrow pointing down at the shape layer below it. This is how Photoshop lets us know that the image is now clipped to the shape. To resize and reposition the image inside the shape, again make sure you have Layer 1 selected. Then go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. This places the Free Transform box and handles around the actual dimensions of your image, including the area outside the visible canvas. If you can't see all of your Free Transform handles because your image is too big to fit entirely on the screen, go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen. Photoshop will automatically adjust the zoom level so that the entire free transform box is visible. To resize the image inside the shape, press and hold your shift key and drag any of the corner handles. Holding the shift key as you drag locks the aspect ratio of your image as you're resizing it. To move the image inside the shape, click anywhere inside the free transform box and drag the image into position. When you're ready, click the check mark in the options bar to close out of the free transform command. At this point, our main image and shape effect is done. Of course, there's always more we can do to customize it and make it look even better. One thing we can do is change the color of the background. The easiest way to change the background color is by using one of Photoshop's solid color fill layers. We'll need the solid color fill layer to appear between the background layer and the shape layer. So first, click on the background layer to select it. Then, click on the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Choose Solid Color from the top of the list. Photoshop pops open the Color Picker where we can choose a new color. Black is a popular choice, and since it's already chosen for me, we can see what it looks like behind the shape. 
Black definitely brings out the details of the shape, but as the background color for a butterfly, it's probably not the best choice. I could choose a different color from the color picker itself, or I could sample a color directly from the image inside the shape. To sample a color, move your mouse cursor over the color you want to use. Your cursor will temporarily switch to the eyedropper tool icon, letting you know it's ready to sample a color. I like to keep background colors subtle, so rather than choosing green from the trees or red from the flowers, I'll choose a light skin tone from the girl's forehead by clicking on it. As soon as I click, the sampled color becomes the new background color. I like this new color better, so I'll click OK to accept it and close out of the color picker. If we look in the Layers panel, we see our solid color fill layer named Color Fill 1 sitting between the background layer and the shape layer. Finally, let's finish off the effect by adding a stroke around the shape. Click on the Shape layer in the Layers panel to select it. Then click on the Layer Styles icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Choose Stroke from the list. This opens the Layer Style dialog box set to the Stroke options in the middle column. To change the stroke's color, click on the color swatch. This again opens the color picker. I'll choose white for my stroke color, and then I'll click OK. Back in the Layer Style dialog box, I'll set the position of the stroke to outside so that it appears around the outside of the shape. Finally, I'll increase the size value to adjust the thickness of the stroke. For this image, I think a size of around 12 pixels works well. Click OK to close out of the Layer Style dialog box, and we're done. Here's my final Image in Shape effect. And there we have it. That's how to easily place an image inside a shape using clipping masks in Photoshop. If you liked this video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Check out our website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of tutorials covering Photoshop basics, image editing, photo effects, text effects, and more. As always, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.